Hello, my fellow carbon based life forms. I am Borderwise, and welcome back to From the Depths Fuel Engine Tutorials. So, last time we covered injector engines, which are the uh, stupid, simple, I don't care, I just don't want lots of power option. And now we're going to start on the very deep well that is carburetor based engines. But before we begin, two things I'd like to say. Firstly, Thank you to everyone sharing helpful engine tips on the last video, it's much appreciated. You're in fact skipping ahead uh, quite far, a lot of you, and to, as to what the series is going to cover, which is very nice. Uh, it means that I know I'm on the right track with what I'm doing. And secondly, I got a thing wrong last time, and that is that radiators these days don't actually make your engines more inefficient. They don't make your engine burn more material per minute. And that was my bad. That was outdated information. I have no idea when the devs changed that. Uh, I usually keep up pretty well with the patch notes, but this one apparently slipped my mind. In fact, there's basically no reason not to use radiators if you happen to have the space for them. So that's a very important change, and it means that um, a bunch of engines I've been using quite regularly are actually more efficient than I thought they were. So yeah, that's great. They're still not great though, we'll get to that. So, carburetors are the, I guess you could call them the uh, the lawful good to the ejectors, uh, chaotic neutral. They are just straight up provide more engine power when connected to uh, cylinders over here. But the really interesting thing about them is the things you attach them. So you have superchargers, which allows the engine to get more efficient at a lower uh, RPM at a lower load, which is to say you're not using it at max capacity, or you have turbochargers, of which you have two different flavors, which we'll get into in uh, follow-up videos, uh, which attach to which attach to the carburetors by the top bit, the white bit, and they improve the efficiency of the cylinder at higher RPM, so heavier loads when you're using it at near or max capacity, right? So the thing is, we'll cover these guys later. For now, I just want to mention that you don't, strictly speaking, have to use these. You almost always will if you want to make your engine more efficient. But I would be a damn hypocrite if I didn't mention that my current favorite engine prefab to slap down does not use either superchargers or turbochargers. So this is just a quick video to note that you can do that. So... I just realized I built this example engine wrong. Anyway, so I'm just going to show you that engine, and bear in mind that um, this is not an efficient engine, this is a convenient engine. Uh, so, carburetors are already way more material efficient than injectors, like even uh, without um, do ex adding the extra bits onto them. So, let's just demonstrate that right now. We've got here. Cylinder, we're just going to go here, chuck some exhaust on it, and we're going to slap a injector on it, like so. And we do need a fuel. We need a fuel. We need a one fuel over here. So, uh, what are we getting here? So we've got a stale power about 324. This this is not an engine you use, by the way. And if you check the power per material at max volume, it's actually higher than I thought it would be. It'd be 405.8, I really hope, 405, 405, 405, uh, but now this is 465, so already, uh, without the extra bells and whistles, this is more efficient than an injector engine, and there's a trick to that. Um, you will notice that on the preview block for a carburetor, it can attach to cylinders on five of its six sides, in practice, that's like you're pretty much only going to uh, manage to attach cylinders on four sides at most. I've tried to figure out how to get cylinders on all five sides. I have not figured that out yet. If you have figured that out, please do let me know because that would be very interesting. Uh, but there's Tetris, which allows you to make a pretty damn powerful engine. And it's just, it's the baby step above injectors. And that's all we really care about. So, for new. So, let me show you my uh, horrible engine, which I actually really like because it's very convenient. Uh, there's two of them. There's the Radiating Randall and the Radiating Riley. That's just what I call them. They, you can call them whatever you like. So, this is the starter of the Radiating Randall. Uh, the efficiency is 404 
power for material at 100% load. Not great, so to give you a rough idea of efficiency, if you are like between 300 to 400, that's a, not an efficient engine at all uh, in terms of power per material. Uh, once you get to about uh, 500 to 600, that's like more, that is like considerably more efficient. And once you get past uh, 600 and like getting to 700, uh, that is a pretty damn efficient engine. That is an engine that just gently nibbles on your material storage rather than guzzling it like this thing does. So the trick here is, is that if I remove these radiators here, you will see that you've got a line of adapters and you've got cylinders in a kind of pattern here. Let me paint them. So cylinders are, actually let's paint them white so they really pop, there we go. So the cylinders are arranged like this and the carburetors are arranged like this and this particular pattern, I guess you could call it, you could even go nuts and put even more uh, cylinders on the top. Let's let's do that actually. So we go here. There is a carburetor, and let's see here. So you could do something like this, and put more carburetors up there, like so. And you could fit all kinds of fun and activities in there. And already, like, look at that. We've got like, this is a lot of power we got here. The stable power is zero though, because I just got rid of the radiators. So, the reason that this engine exists at all is because trying to stick uh, turbochargers on this particular pattern is a giant pain in the butt. I haven't figured it out yet, but for now, this engine is just nice and power dense. Uh, so let's get rid of all our good work here. So to give you an idea of what this is, this is about 404 power per material. An injector engine of roughly the same size, so let's go... Let's do... That's a little bit something like that. Whoops. So this is... What is it? That's the... Uh, that is the 3 times 3 times 9, 5000 series. And I'm just going to stick an extension on the radiating Randall. Just so you can see what it looks like. Just something like this. We've got a volume of 127. This has actually half of that, so... But, uh, the power per... How much power is that? Stable power is about 7,701. And this is slightly less. For, for effectively not that much space. But, um, the it's still more efficient than a pure injector engine. So, wow, this already went on longer than I thought. So, this video is just to note that you can make a carburetor-only engine without the turbochargers or the supers. In practice, if you're uh, not like me and you don't actually resign to the laziness all the time, you would absolutely use uh, superchargers and turbochargers on your carburetor engines because that's the whole point. But we will cover them uh, in the follow-up video. So, in the meantime, thank you all so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Support me on Patreon or YouTube membership if you'd like. It really helps and there's fun perks in it for you. Thank you to all my current supporters and I will see you next time in From the Depths Fuel Engine Tutorials. I almost forgot, I have almost forgot, hold on, 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 very important, hold on, hold on. There we go. Farewell.